Hello Mudroomers, it's Carmen here again today and I just wanted to come in today to talk about our featured product from this month. Um, I know we posted a handful of samples of um, some stroke and coat samples but today I wanted to come in and actually kind of like let you guys know everything that there is to know about stroke and coats because there's a lot of misconceptions out in the market about them some people have never used them before or don't even know what they are so i'm just going to go from top to bottom what is a stroke and coat and how do you use it um so I'm just going to wait here for a second and let a couple people get on and then I'll just go ahead and go through um, all of the basics. So this will just kind of be what we would teach in any sort of workshop um, addressing these products. Um, it's really applicable to a variety of customers so it kind of dips your toes in a little bit of everything here. So. So to start with, um, I'm just going to go over just like the basics about stroke and coat. So stroke and coat is designed as a low fire product. So generally firing it to cone 06, 04 kind of range. Um, it's a highly opaque and pigmented gloss glaze. So you heard me right, it is a glaze, it will fire glossy. It's not an under glaze or anything like that. You can use it underneath a clear glaze, but if you have your entire piece um, covered with stroke and coat, like you can see in the sample here, um, it's just gonna fire glossy on its own. So this is all stroke and coat, no clear glaze, on a earthenware bisque item and fired to cone 06. So beautiful gloss finish, a nice bright colors, and totally opaque coverage um, at this firing temperature. So the cool thing about Stroke & Coat, beyond its amazing performance at low fire, is the fact that you can bring it up to higher temperatures. So the opacity and the pigments most of them hold up unchanged at higher temperatures um, and there are some colors that are, are going to shift a little bit when you do bring it up to those higher temperatures so that is information that we do have available on our label we have our mid-range color results as well as on our website so our website showcases the multiple firing results multiple firing ranges um, for all of our products. So for Stroke and & Coat and all of our low fire products, we have Cone 06 and Cone 6. And then for our mid-range product, products, we have Cone 6 and Cone 10 available. Um, just to give you kind of a little bit more information as to how these products perform. So again, Stroke & Coat holds up great at Cone 6, and a lot of the colors even look good at Cone 10. Um, so that is just an amazing thing about Stroke & Coat. When you are bringing it up to higher temperatures, you're not going to get this crisp, clean um, line work like this. So usually if you're going to be doing it at higher temperatures, I would recommend using it in, in layering with other glazes. So here we have a Stroke & Coat layered over top of Alabaster. This is Fruit of the Vine over Alabaster. Um, so you're just using it in a glaze combination to bring colors that you might not normally have in your stoneware palette. Or here's another technique where we did it with a little bit of slip trailing with a wash. I know I showed this uh, plate, I think, last week or the week before. Um, and here we have our stroke and coat dots just as like a bright pop of color um, mixed with some other stoneware products. Um, and here is another great way to use Stroke & Coat at Cone 6 would be to just do like um, some tape and color blocking. So you see it does stay where you put it, um, but I still wouldn't recommend layering them or doing design work necessarily um, with these colors. You're not going to get the same kind of crisp and cleanness. If you like a little bit looser design work, that's great. And they're perfect for that but anything like this you're going to want to designate to low fire or if this is something you're seeking out at cone six we do have our stoneware gloss glazes available 
This is our stoneware gloss glaze at Cone 6. So as you can see, you do have those beautiful, nice, crisp designs. Um, so the stoneware gloss glazes is what I would recommend if you do want design work at Cone 6. Um, but the stroke and coats are amazing to add a nice pop of color um, at those higher temperatures. So another feature of stroke and coat is kind of just like how safe of a product it is. We're always getting asked questions. Is this food safe? Is this dinner worth safe? The stroke and coat satisfies all of those qualifications. It is certified food safe. It is recommended for dinnerware and they are even AP non-toxic products. So the AP non-toxic is in regards to the wet glaze itself. Um, so you're handling the wet glaze, you're playing with kids or something and the kids get into their mouth or something. There's no worry there at all. Um, there's totally non-toxic. And then the food safe and dinnerware safe recommendations are for the fired and finished glaze in which food safe is qualifying for leaching of lead and cadmium. These guys don't do that at all. And then the um, dinnerware safe is a MAKO recommendation as to whether it can be used on dinnerware. And that's something that we advise based on kind of the durability of the finished surface, surface texture, things like that. And we do recommend our stroke and coat glazes for um, dinnerware as well. Um, again, kind of like how I've been touching on, we really love how versatile this product is. It's really, really easy to use for anyone that's using it. We recommend applying um, three coats of glaze generally, but you can apply less coats to have a variety of um, firing results. So here we have three coats of everything, nice opaque coverage. Here I've got a tile sample showcasing um, different loadings. So here we have a one coat application two coat application and three coat application. So as you can see, the opacity and the texture created in the application is going to change based on how many coats you are applying. If you want full opaque coverage with a high gloss finish without applying clear glaze, we recommend to have three coats of stroke and coat applied onto your piece um, for that. Um, another great thing that makes it really versatile for our users is the fact that stroke and coat can be applied directly onto greenware. Um, so if you're a teacher or you're paying for all your firings and you're trying to save some time and some money, um, we'll recommend to just apply directly to the greenware. You can do it on, um, on uh, like leather hard or bone dry, just depending on your personal preference. Um, and one thing that you do want to keep in mind is that you want to leave space for outgassing. So generally, we would advise to leave um, one quarter to one third of the space for outgassing. So if you're firing to cone 04, generally, if you just leave like the bottom or a good section of it unglazed, um, then that's enough space. Usually with like you're doing like pottery and uh, studio setting usually the bottom is a big enough uh, area to, for outgassing and then for cone six you're not glazing the bottom of those anyway so um, that's a great place to leave space for outgassing as well um, sometimes firing on slow can be helpful the main thing you're worried about in firing a uh, single firing is looking for pinholes so keeping um, ample time and space for outgassing is really going to be your primary concern um, when you're doing something like that. Um, so I just want to go ahead and talk to you guys about how to apply a coat of stroke and coat because I think um, everyone has a little bit of a different hand and actually having a formal um, application um, demonstration is really, really good um, just because everyone does do everything a little bit differently. So I'm just going to get a little bit of candy apple red here. Um, and I'm just going to put it on a tile. I have these this variety of brushes that I wanted to kind of show you guys how to use. Um, the soft fan brush is my go-to for full coverage application. So nice 
solid three coats. This will usually be what I'm doing when I'm doing stoneware stuff, full coverage. The script liner is something I would use for uh, doing brushwork or any details like this. It's great because you can load a lot of glaze on there, but also still get your nice details in here. And then this is something that I would do for lined work. So all of these are awesome applications for stroke and coat since it is so great for anything that you want to do, use it for. So I'm just going to condition my brush in a little bit of water up here. I've got my water, squeeze my brush out. And so for full application with stroke and coat, you know, I just want to fully load my brush. I'm a pretty heavy glazer, so put it on. And as soon as it starts trailing like that, you just want to get a little bit more glaze on your brush and keep doing that. I kind of like to think of it almost like you're know, like spreading peanut butter <laughs> along the surface. It's a little bit easier um, if you start with a lot and then spread it out to make it evenly instead of just trying to drag it across the bread and you're <laughs> like tearing up that bread. <laughs> um, so there's just like one nice coat of stroking coat. You can see it's nice and shiny. And so any of these um, brush marks that you kind of see here, um, I do notice a lot of people kind of meticulously trying to smooth stuff like that out. Um, this product will level itself out so you don't have to try to brush all these little marks out. If you apply enough glaze, it kind of just settles um, in the firing and you end up with a nice, nice smooth finish. So there's just like one coat of stroke and coat for full coverage. Um, we can go ahead and get another color for... Uh, doing some brush strokes and this is something that well here let's do a brush stroke in a blue and then um, we'll do the line work with the black so we'll get our brush stroke with our script liner so this is something I'm gonna fully load it but let's just do a double load so you can see the uh, brush stroke a little better so I've got my nice fat loading here. I'll double load it with a little bit of the red. Do a brush stroke. So this brush stroke application, this is something that I would want to be doing um, clear glaze over because as you can see I'm just doing a, a single coat. Um, you could also, it, um, if you didn't want to apply clear glaze, you could do this over top of a base coat which you could do with stroke and coat or even our foundation glazes are really good for doing base coats. So if you don't want to apply clear glaze over this area, since you're only doing one or two coats and there's not a background color, you could always do a base color. And then finally we'll do our line work. I like to load uh, my liner brush with a little bit of water and pull it through the um, stroke and coat. And this really helps the it really helps the glaze flow off the brush a little bit better since the glaze does have that gum in it it's just kind of can get stuck up in your brush so we'll just kind of wing this line here we'll start at a little fat and then go from there and then we'll go back around this way And this is still kind of wet, so it's probably going to get blurry in here. There we go, and there's some nice uh, simple line work. So that's a variety of ways to use stroke and coat with different brushes. Um, and then also there's a lot of different techniques that you can do with stroke and coat as well. So as I showed you previously, we had this uh, tile showcasing the brush strokes with one, two, and three coat application. Um, and then here, as I showed, we have cone six doing taping, which is great to do at low fire as well. I love this kind of technique. Um, you can use stroke and coat in a more painterly fashion. So these are two pieces that they had a base coat applied underneath it to avoid a clear glaze application. Um, but you can get some really, really nice effects just doing one, even one thinned coat of stroke and coat to create kind of like a watercolor effect. And same with here, doing some nice shading using stroke and coat in a really, really painterly fashion, I think is very, very effective. 
um, stripping coat because the high pigment and opacity works really well um, with light over dark. So here's just a really basic example of using cottontail over tuxedo, showcasing how well this cottontail um, covers that dark, dark color, which, which is really, really great. And then another amazing thing is how wonderful these reds are. So these reds, the pigments hold up all the way up to cone 10, um, which is really, really great getting that really bright, vibrant color at those um, higher temperatures. This tile here was just fired to 06, and then we have three different reds available. Um, if you are bringing your reds up to cone 6 or cone 10, it does tend to like a thinner application more than a thick application. So if you're going to be doing a, um, let's see, doing, uh, bring it up, you want to do like maybe two coats of glaze instead of three coats of glaze. Um, you can get like a kind of orange peel effect. So that's something that you're going to want to kind of be careful for. Um, Strip and Coat also works really, really well in design work. So here we're using it with um, a silk screen. And then just like one coat. And this piece did have a clear glaze applied to it just to cover up all of these. Um, some colors are going to react with clear glazes is one thing to keep in mind. So a lot of the chrome tin pigments, so a lot of purples, um, those might react as well as some of the pink colors. Um, otherwise, you're good to apply clear glaze on top of it. Um, yeah, and so that, I guess, kind of goes over just sort of the basics of stroking coats. Um, if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll go back and answer these. We'll get this guy up on um, YouTube so that um, more people can ask questions about it and it's more available to a broader audience. So I really, really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Um, oh, we do have one question here asking if you can use this with Luster. Um, yeah, you can definitely use most products with Luster. Like anything that's going to be fired um, works pretty well. Like since Luster firings is a third firing, um, it's not the that firing at that low of a temperature is not going to affect the results of the stroke and coat. So if you're firing to 018 or 020 for a luster firing, that's not enough to change any of the stroke and coat results. So you're gonna be totally good to go um, with any luster firings. So. so yeah, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to drop them. If I don't catch it by the end of this uh, video, I will definitely tune back in and answer them later. Again, I'm going to get this up on YouTube, link it on Instagram. So I really, really appreciate all of you guys tuning in today. Please let me know um, what you thought of this video. And if you have any questions or anything like that, um, definitely reach out to me. So um, yeah, I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks. Bye.